to FAO and also to UNWTO for uh, including me into this important uh, uh, forum. Um, some great speakers and I've already learned a lot from uh, the previous speakers. So I wanted to share a few things as it relates to uh, the potential of agritourism in the Mekong region. Um, so the Mekong region uh, is a um, uh, regional tourism collaboration between the six governments of the Mekong region, it's headquartered in Bangkok, Thailand, and was established in 2005. So here's just a quick overview. So it includes Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and in China, Yunnan and Guangxi. Um, obviously, we've seen over the last uh, five years uh, a rapid rise of food tourism globally. And in the Mekong region, uh, we've been um, uh, uh, looking at food tourism uh, uh, in, in different various aspects. So, I mean, on one hand, we created a strategy paper back in 2016, so almost five years ago. Um, we also created uh, various forums on, on food. Um, and always trying to bring in the local communities and, and uh, the local aspect to keep it authentic. Um, now, with uh, COVID, obviously, we, we see a few key three consumer trends. Um, so besides the rising Asian middle class and also digital consumerism, the first thing is from unhealthy living uh, to organic lifestyle. So we see that people are looking to live more healthy. The second thing is from mass tourism we will see a more local experiences. Uh, Sandra from UNWTO explained that, that people are looking more for rural experiences. Uh, so I think that's uh, very much aligned. And uh, the third thing is oops, uh, from following tours to purposeful travel. So really people want to connect with people, they want to give back and they want to have a meaning when they uh, ex uh, enjoy their, their travel experiences. Um, so that's obviously a big potential to combine agriculture and tourism, the two largest economies in the greater Mekong subregion. Um, and when it comes to uh, the, this uh, subregion in Southeast Asia, we have a lot of um, food uh, products that are actually found in, in, in many of the countries, so from chili, pepper, rice, silk, fruit, fish, tea, salt, and coffee. Um, and when it comes to products that are well known, I mean, so we have Chinese Pua Tia, which, which is obviously uh, world, world famous, Thai rice, Lao coffee, Kampot pepper, Thai silk, um, and so on. So lots of opportunities there to promote this uh, and give back to the communities. I wanna uh, show you a few quick examples to just uh, bring it alive a bit. Um, so one is uh, obviously um, Doitung Coffee, uh, which is a project that was uh, uh, started by the late uh, King uh, Rama Ten, uh, and and really is there to drive agriculture and and helping uh, pro uh, people in the in the provinces in, in northeast uh, Thailand. Another nice example is Kamu Lodge. Uh, it's also in in Thailand, and and so. Here is the staff is 100% made up of local people. And from an agriculture standpoint, there's rice planting, net fishing, and gold planning, uh, panning. So, so it's, a, it's a real nice experience, which obviously is purposeful because it gives back to the local community. There's a tour uh, operator called Local Alike. Um, and, and they have really nice experiences with the local communities. So you can, in this example, you can stay at a farm uh, in, in Chiang Rai and, and really experience um, the, the local, local life. Um, another one is in Cambodia, Kampot Pepper. So you can have uh, um, Kampot Pepper tours. You can stay at a resort uh, that is working with Kampot Pepper. So again, um, really bringing the tourism experience together with agriculture. Uh, I mentioned Yunnan Pua Tea before, so I obviously in Shishong Guana in, in southern Yunnan, uh, you can also explore the art of tea making. And then there's even a Relais Chateau Hotel where you can stay in the middle of a tea plantation. Um, moving to Laos, so I mean, there we have uh, tours uh, also where you can visit Laos uh, coffee plantations, and, and there's also the famous 
a Lao coffee festival. Moving on to Vietnam, uh, obviously famous for rice, so you can uh, uh, get involved with rice farming and, and also can stay at a farm stay. Uh, this one has been um, supported by uh, various development banks called Chai Lap, and it's also part of our experience Mekong collection. Um, now moving on to Thailand again, I wanted to give you one uh, example. So obviously with Thailand, uh, the Tourism Authority of Thailand has been promoting agritourism uh, for a while. Uh, and one um, core, a cornerstone is rice farming. So this is something that people can experience. I'm obviously talking pre-COVID. Um, and uh, when we look at the potential versus the reality, so it's really the question is how can we position the GMS, the Greater Mekong Subregion, as a global agritourism destination. So the tourism industry in the, uh, in the Mekong region has been growing rapidly. Um, so promoting agritourism uh, as a concept, the value uh, is really uh, to contribute to the rural population. And that obviously is aligned to consumer trends where people are looking more to have rural experiences. Through agritourism, development farmers can develop themselves into entrepreneurs and agritourism contributes to rural development by creating employment opportunities and empowerment of rural people. And then finally, agritourism may assist in positioning the GMS as an authentic experiential, experiential uh, destination, supporting consumer trends of purposeful travel, authentic experiences, and healthy living. So I think, again, this is very relevant post-COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Now, the issue that, that when we look at agritourism, which, which sometimes is forgotten, is the move to organic tourism. So the GMS alone accounts for 18% of global nitrogen emissions from fertilizers. So that's obviously is a big issue when you're, when you're looking to stay healthy. So there's various initiatives uh, on the way to really promote organic farmers, uh, because this sometimes is difficult. Um, it, it seems to be an easy fix, but it actually takes a lot more time and effort to really drive organic tourism as a concept. Um, one model is the Sampran model in, in Thailand, and that really su uh, supports sustainable businesses um, based on community partnerships and the sufficiency economy uh, philosophy by the late king. So the, the, the problem here is obviously that, you know, when we look at uh, the, the cycle, that the farmers are in this vicious cycle uh, of depth environment, you know, producing quickly and then have to use chemicals. Um, then they have to use the middlemen. So a lot of the profit is taken out. And then the consumer obviously felt this, uh, faces health risks and higher price of organic products. I think we see that everywhere. So, so here the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the solution is to support these organic farmers. Uh, that obviously drives um, a better environment. And also because um, either we cut out the middleman or there's a fair middleman, there's higher profit and then the consumer has more fair prices and can enjoy healthier food. Um, so this is really how the Sampran model works and it's working with government. I'm not gonna go too much into detail now, but in concept, it's really uh, that the, the farmer can go directly to the consumer and also promote directly to the hotels or, or to the meeting venues and so on to, um, to promote and, and, and sell their, their uh, food. Uh, back actually in 2017, um, uh, together Mekong Tourism Coordinating Office and Tourism Authority of Thailand uh, organized the first organic tourism um, campaign um, so this is something that then was taken on. And now, uh, just recently, uh, TOKA was launched, which is, which is the Thai Organic Consumer Association, uh, together with the Tourism Authority of Thailand. So again, not to go too much into detail, but we see here that um, this is really taking the model we've seen before to a whole new level, um, where the farmers then di work directly with the hotels, the restaurants, and the, and the consumers. And there's also blockchain built in, there is a plastic free built in uh, and, and all these kind of things. So again, I'm happy to share this with you if you're interested, but I think it's a very innovative model that can also be applied to other destinations all over the world. I'm gonna skip this uh, video. Uh, you can find it on, on, on YouTube. This is just basically talking about this TOKA model. 
and uh, how it is applied in Phuket as a pilot project uh, on the island uh, south of Thailand. Oops. And, and that's basically it for me. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions or share the presentation as well. Thank you very much.